Hello everyone, welcome to Second Year Phonetics, video number one. My name is Dr. Ines Mitwelli. First things first, please have your pencil and paper ready or your computer to take notes and to do the exercises. In today's video, for Second Year Phonetics, video number one, we have three issues. First, how the course is organized. Then, phonetics, terminology related to phonetics. And third, the organs of speech or the articulators. And finally, some websites and apps that we recommend that you use for your studies. First of all, how the course is organized. We have a course book. We have a recorded video presentation weekly. Please watch it at least once before you go to class. Take notes, do the exercises, and take those with you to class. There's supplementary material and exercises. When you attend class, take notes. After class, you'll receive a PDF file with embedded audio. This will be posted to the Facebook group. That was our first issue, how the course is organized. Now we already know something about phonetics, we'll discuss that in a minute. Today we will learn what is phonetics and we'll learn some related terminology, accents and dialects, phonetics and phonology, phonemes, and we will learn the third issue, the articulators or the organs of speech. And finally, we have some recommended phonetics websites and apps. Look at this text message. Can you read it? Do you write similar text messages? These are all based on how the words sound. So this is something you already know that we can call phonetics. Are you coming tonight? Will you be late? Texting is partly phonetic. We also know that in ancient Egypt they used hieroglyphics, but very few of us are familiar with this ancient writing system. This writing system was based on using a picture or a symbol, which we call an ideogram, a pictogram or a logogram, and those pictures would represent most words. Ideograms or pictograms or logograms look like the object they represent but they don't actually show you how the word is pronounced. This type of writing system is based on meaning, which also means we need thousands and thousands and thousands of symbols to represent all the words in a language. Nowadays, there are hardly any purely logographic systems. Even Chinese characters were modified, and many of them were modified so much, they don't actually look like the objects they represent. We also know that Arabic has an alphabet and that if you read a word in Arabic, you can quite easily pronounce it. If you hear a word in Arabic, it's not that difficult to spell it either. This does not apply to English, which uses a Latin alphabet. But there is so much difference between the way we spell and the way we pronounce words in English. To learn phonetics, we're going to use the Latin alphabet and some other characters from the extended Latin alphabet. We know that the scientific study of language is called linguistics. What do we mean by the word scientific? Science basically means knowledge. A scientific study of language means that language is all around. People use it all the time. So you should be observant, keep your ears open at all times, have an open mind. We think that all languages are equally complex and sophisticated. All languages are systematic, that is, they have rules. What we look for are generalizations, which will lead us to rules of language. So that's what linguistics is, the scientific study of language. What is phonetics then? Well, phonetics has to do with the production, transmission, and reception of 
The scientific study of speech sounds is phonetics. It includes three major areas of study. The first one is the production of speech sounds, how they are made, how they are articulated, how they are produced. And this is called articulatory phonetics. This is studied by linguistic students worldwide, also by students of speech and language therapy, by medical students, by voice students, students of singing, drama students, and language students. The second area of study is um, the study of the properties, the physical properties of speech as sound waves in the air. So what they measure are sound waves, and this is more physics, it's called acoustic phonetics. The third area of study is where you study the reception or perception of speech sounds. This is ear training, what speech sounds sound like. And this is useful for linguistics fieldwork, for speech therapy, accent coaching, and language teaching. This is called auditory phonetics. Our focus is on the production of speech sounds or the articulation of speech sounds, and this is called articulatory phonetics. A phonetician studies speech sounds, and this course will help you become more aware of speech sounds, just like a phonetician. Speech is continuous. To study speech sounds, a phonetician has to divide the word into its individual sounds. The way we spell a written word into letters, we divide a spoken word into speech sounds. So look at the word dog. It has three letters, D, O and G. When we write English words, we will surround them with angled brackets to surround the letters and to surround the words. How many speech sounds in the word dog? There's D, O and G. Let's do the same thing for the word cat. It has three letters in angled brackets, C, A and T. And it has how many speech sounds? K, A, T. Three. What about tough? Tough has five letters and T, A, uh, three sounds. Bud, three letters, and B, A, uh, D, three sounds. Love, four letters, and L, A, uh, V, three sounds. X, two letters, and E, K, K, three sounds. Beige, five letters, and B, A, J, three sounds. Buff, four letters, and B, A, F, three sounds. Do the same thing for this slide. Count the letters in each word and count the sounds in each word. Right has five letters and how many sounds? R, I, T, three. Measure has seven letters and how many sounds? M, E, J, E. Now pause the video, write the word list, and write next to each word the number of letters and the number of sounds. Do the same thing for this slide. Pause the video, write the word list, count the number of letters and sounds, and write them. English spelling is misleading. Can you read the following words? Sure. Pleasure, sign, resign. The S is pronounced sh, j, s, and z. Sure, 
pleasure, sign, resign. What about CH? Church, chemistry, Cheryl. Ch, K, and Sh. The TH can be in think or th in those gh can be in love or g in ghost read measure stake e e a Bear, hear, learn, heart. Air, ear, er, ah. Enough, through, thorough, though, thought, bow. Again, enough, through, thorough, though, thought, and bow. Af, u, a, o, o, ow. English spelling is misleading. Look at the words height, weight, and receipt. They have the same EI spelling but different pronunciation. Height, weight, receipt. We also have dough, through, rough, cough, fought, and drought. The same letters can have different sounds in English. The opposite is also true. See, see, seen, receive, Thief, amoeba, machine are all pronounced with an E, but they have different spelling. So the same sound can be written in different ways. In English, we also have letters which are not pronounced. Psychology, island, sign, lamb, though, and sort all have silent letters. Sometimes one letter has two sounds, like the X in six, it's K. -s. Also in complex, K. -s. In other cases, two letters represent one sound. So we have sh in wash, the ch in such, and the ck in luck. We now know that English spelling and sound are separate. There are two separate levels for analysis. There's the writing, the orthographic level, the level of spelling, and there is the sound level or the phonetic or phonemic level. When we say that English spelling is misleading, we mean that the orthographic and sound levels are separate in English. In English, we have homographs, words that look the same but are pronounced differently. So they are spelt the same way, but they sound different. For example, this word. It may be furniture, polish, or it could be someone or something that comes from Poland. So it could be polish, furniture, polish, or Polish, someone or something that comes from Poland. Homographs, the same spelling, but different pronunciation. Homo from Greek means the same, 
Graph, also from Greek, means writing. Homographs have the same spelling but sound different. Another example is this word, written B-W-O. Remember, the angled brackets show you that this is English spelling. It may mean this, or that, or this, or that. Different pronunciations. Can you guess what the pronunciations are? Think about it and take that with you to class. Now here is our dictation test to show you that you do know something called homophones. Now write as many words as you can for each of the numbers I will give you. Number one, bear. Two, four. Number three, see. Number four, scent. Five, soul. Six, choose. Seven, heard. Eight, meet. Nine, sight. Ten, through. I'll read them one more time. One, bear. Two, four. Three, see. Four, scent. Five, soul. Six, choose. Seven, heard. Eight, meet. Nine, sight. Ten, through. You may pause the video and listen again to the words. Make sure you have at least two words for each of these numbers. The words sound the same, but they are spelt differently. We know that the orthographic and sound levels are separate in English. Now we will look at homophones. Homophones sound the same, but are spelt differently. Homo comes from Greek, and it means the same. And phone, also from Greek, means sound. Now sometimes a speaker's accent will decide if a pair of words are homophones or not. Look at these two words. They are luck and look. So for most speakers of English, they are actually not homophones. But for most speakers of Northern English, they are homophones. For speakers from certain parts of the north, this is look and this is look, look and look. So they are not homophones, but their pronunciation is quite different from the pronunciation that we are familiar with and the one that we will learn from the southeast of England. How about these two words? They are which and which. So for most speakers of English, these are homophones. For Scottish and Irish speakers, they say which and which. So there's a h element in the second word. What we will learn during our course is called received pronunciation. It's a very important um, decision to make. Which English do we learn in a phonetics course? Received pronunciation is the standard that is taught in most um, linguistics courses if you're doing British English. It is um, there because it is easier to um, explain. It's basically easier to hear the differences for students of the language. It's easier to hear the differences in pronunciation, in the vowel sounds in received pronunciation. There is plenty of material and once you have this foundation you can decide later on to continue using RP or to drop RP altogether and use American English or whatever accent you prefer but in that case you will have a very good foundation to build on. Received pronunciation there is a video on that that you can watch if you're interested is also called Modern Received Pronunciation
standard Southern British English and it's also given the term General British. All of these refer to the same thing. You can watch the video to find out more if you like. Accent and dialect are not the same thing. Accent is only the pronunciation. In British English, this word is law. In American English, it's la. Law, la. Dialect is more general. It is a broader term which refers to language variety. It includes pronunciation, but it also includes vocabulary. So in British English, this is a pavement. In American English, it's a sidewalk. In British English, you have the underground, and in American English, the subway. In British English, when you're looking for medication, you go to a chemist, in America, you go to a drugstore. When you make a mistake and you want to erase it, in British English, you use a rubber. In American English, you use an eraser. There are also differences in grammar in both dialects. Have you got any brothers or sisters is British. Do you have any brothers or sisters is American. Have you done your homework yet? is British. Did you do your homework yet? is American. There are differences in word order and there are other differences in the American dialect that make it unique. Phonetics is the study of the production, transmission and reception of speech sounds. Phonology is the study of the sounds and sound patterns of a specific language. Our focus is English phonology. At the beginning of an English word, you can start the word with S and P followed by a vowel. Never P plus S plus a vowel. This is in English. Here's a list of nonsense words. They are not English words. Can you decide which of these looks like it's an English word or it can be an English word and which word cannot be English. The first one, well, yes, maybe. How about krong? Yes. Smort? No. Pause the video, write the word list. Next to each word, tick it if it is a possible word and put an X next to it if it cannot be found in English ever. So phonetics is the production, transmission and reception or perception of speech sounds. Phonology is the sounds and sound patterns of a specific Phoneticians analyze words into speech sounds and then they study the speech sounds. Can we do this now? Look at the word fish. Say the word fish. How many speech sounds does it have? It has three. F, I, sh. It starts with a consonant, followed by a vowel, and then at the end we have another consonant. The word cough has the same structure. Consonant, vowel, consonant. Women has five speech sounds starts with a consonant followed by a vowel, another consonant, another vowel and a consonant. These three words were easy to split into speech sounds. The next word is more complicated. It depends on your pronunciation. Do you say station or station? If you say station then we have a consonant, consonant, vowel, consonant, and then consonant. If you say it station, then you start with a consonant, another consonant, a vowel, consonant, and then a vowel and a consonant, which is why the vowel here is between brackets. 
in the transcription and in the CV skeleton. It depends if you say station, you have no vowel. If you say station, then you have a vowel. Now let's do the same thing for these words. Look at every word, say it aloud, represent the English word using the symbol C for consonant sound and V for vowel sound. This way you will make a CV consonant vowel skeleton. Pause the video, write the list of words and then write next to each one its CV skeleton. Let's do the first two together. Dog has three sounds, d, o, and g. Consonant, vowel, consonant. Remember, we're talking about vowel sounds and consonant sounds. Moon has the same structure. Consonant, vowel, consonant. Pause the video again and do the same thing for this set of words. Phoneticians study speech sounds, so they break words into speech sounds and then analyze those. What exactly are speech sounds? Say the word could, should. They are the same in that they have three sounds, k, u, and d, and sh, u, and d. The u and d, the second and third sounds, are the same. And there's a difference in the first sound. And this first sound in could and should changes the meaning. What about good? Another word with a different meaning. Hood has at the beginning. And that changes the meaning. It gives us another word. Then the word would. So we can say that the k, sh, g, and w are phonemes. They are the smallest unit of sound that can actually change the meaning of a word. It can distinguish meaning, makes a difference in meaning. Or it's the smallest unit of speech sound that distinguishes one word from another. We can say that we have now five different phonemes, consonant phonemes in English. K, sh, g, and w. What about vowel sounds? Let's look at some examples. We have been and bin. Two different words. The consonants at the beginning and at the end are the same in been and bin, but the vowel sound is different and the vowel sound changes the meaning. E and E are English phonemes. What about Ben? Ban, Bon, Bon, Born, Bun, Burn. So how many vowel phonemes do we have now? We have E, I, E, A, A, O, O, a and a. So we now know that a phoneme is the smallest unit of speech sound that can change the meaning or make a difference in meaning or distinguish one word from another. And we have so many vowel phonemes in English. How many? We'll find out. Let's compare letters and phonemes. The word man has three letters, M, A, and N. Remember, we use the angled brackets for English words. How many phonemes in the word man? Three, M, A, N. Phonemes we write in slashes. Men has three letters, M, E, and N. And the number of phonemes in men is again the same thing. Three. M, e, n. How many vowel sounds do we have 
in English and how many vowel letters. We have five vowel letters, you know that from school. A, E, I, O, U. Here are some example words of the five vowel letters in English. Pat. Pet. Pit. Pot. And put. How about the vowel phonemes? In English, we have so many phonemes, far more than five. We have seven short vowel phonemes in the words pit, pet, pat, pot, put, pot from golf, and pitter. We have five long vowel phonemes in words like keyed, card, cooed, cord, and curd. So seven and five, that's twelve. And we have another eight other vowel phonemes in English. Found in words like deer, dare, doer, bay, by, boy, no, now. English spelling is not consistent at all. We know that much. There are three different types of spelling inconsistency in English. The first one is where the number of sounds is not the same as the number of letters in the word. No has four letters, but n, o, two sounds. Comb has four letters and k, o, m, three sounds. Light has five letters and l, i, t, three sounds. There's also the problem that one sound, a single sound, is represented by different spellings. The f is there in floor, the letter f. In photo, it's ph. In rough, it is gh. And in roof, it is f. The opposite is also true. A letter representing several different sounds for example, cat and city. So the letter C is K in cat and S in city. This is also the same for vowels. We have bus and busy. So in bus, the vowel is A. In busy, the vowel is I. What we need then is an international phonetic alphabet this was created or designed by the International Phonetic Association so that every single vowel sound or consonant sound, every single phoneme, has one symbol only. And every symbol represents a single sound. The International Phonetic Alphabet, the IPA, applies to all world languages. So in the IPA, we want a system that is universal, that does not give preference to one existing spelling system over another. We want an um, alphabet that is easily interpreted by linguists worldwide. So if I write a word for you in IPA, you should read it. And if you write a word for me in IPA, I should be able to read it with no problems. The IPA also should be transparent, where there is the same number of symbols as the number of sounds. Now, when we're talking about the English alphabet or the Latin alphabet, we talk about letters. When we talk about phonetic transcription, we talk about symbols. And the IPA covers all the symbols for all the languages of the entire world. Any human language, sound, exists in the IPA. The International Phonetic Alphabet has three main characteristics. One symbol has only one equivalent speech sound. Each sound has only one symbol. And the number of symbols and the number of sounds 
is exactly the same. Remember, when we write English words as examples, we put them in angled brackets. When we transcribe words in phonetics, we put them between slashes. The number of sounds is the same number as the symbols when we transcribe words. Ka has k, a, two sounds, and it has two symbols, the k and a. Ki has k, e, p, three sounds, so we write the symbol k. Symbol two is e, and the third symbol is p. Shirt has sh, uh, Three sounds, so we write three symbols. Sh, uh, t. Knee has n, e. Two sounds, so we write two symbols, the n and e. When you learn IPA, you can actually transcribe any word that you hear in any language if you know the appropriate symbols. What we learn in this course are the symbols for RP only. Transcription is not difficult at all. Very soon you'll be able to read any transcribed sentence. Here's an example of a transcription. I'd like you to try to read it. Pause the video, read it, write it down and take it with you to class. Phonetics is the scientific study of speech sounds. We know so much. The speech sounds are two types, consonants and vowels. And here are the symbols for RP consonants. Let me read them for you. We have P, B, T, D, Ch, J, K. G. We have twenty four RP consonants. You will learn them. We also have twelve simple vowels. E, E, U, U, E, 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 O, A, 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 O. We have twelve simple vowels in RP English, and we have eight other vowels which we will learn a bit later. They are Ear, ua, air, a, oi, i, o, ow. So we have 20 RP vowels and 24 consonants, which makes a total of 44 phonemes of RP English. English has 44 phonemes. 24 consonants and 20 vowels. Let's start by looking at the consonant phonemes one more time. They are p, b, t, d, ch, j, k, g, f, v, th, z, z, sh, z, m, n, u, h, l, r, w, y. Let's move to the vowel sounds. They are e, i, u, u, e, 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 o, a, 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 o. Twelve simple vowels. The other vowels are e, u, e, a, o, i, i, o, o. You will learn the symbols for the 44 phonemes of RP English very soon, inshallah. Now, how many phonemes are there in the following words? Remember what a phoneme is? 
A phoneme is the smallest unit of sound that can distinguish meaning or make a difference in meaning or distinguish one word from another. So how many phonemes are there in the word dog? D, O, G has three phonemes. Moon has three phonemes and fish three. Remember, we're talking about sounds, not spelling. Pause the video, write the word list, and write the number of phonemes in each of these words. Now, this slide is for you to look at at your own pace. This is a razor blade, and this is the anatomy of a knife, starting with the tip and the blade. These are the words that we're interested in for our course. The other words you can look at in your own time might be useful someday. We will speak with air from the lungs. As students of phonetics, we need to study phonemes. But before we do that, we need to know the organs responsible for the production of speech sounds. This is a side view of parts of the throat, nose and mouth that we use to make English speech sounds. The air leaves the lungs and comes up through the windpipe and arrives at the larynx. The larynx has two small bands of elastic tissue across the air passage and these are called the vocal cords. Then we go to the palate. The palate is basically the roof of the mouth. It separates the oral cavity from the nasal cavity. Now make the tip of your tongue touch the roof of your mouth or the palate. You'll find that most of the front part is hard and as you move away from your front teeth, the palate becomes soft. The palate is so important in the production of speech sounds that we divide it into three sections. We'll look at that uh, in another slide. This slide shows us the oral cavity and the nasal cavity and a part of the vocal tract called the pharynx which is not really relevant to English. This is the larynx, that's right. And this is your palate which is divided into three parts. Here's another slide showing us the organs of speech or the articulators. Number one, we have the lips, very easy, and two, the teeth. Number three, four and five, are the parts of the palate. The palate divides the oral cavity from the nasal cavity. It separates the oral cavity from the nasal cavity. As we said, the palate is very important in the production of speech sounds. We divide it into three sections. The hard part, just behind the upper front teeth, is called the alveolar ridge. The next hard part, which is the highest part of the palate, is called the hard palate. And finally comes the soft part called the velum or the soft palate. At the very end of the palate is the dangling part, the hanging part, which is the uvula. The palate is then alveolar ridge, hard palate, and velum or soft palate. Number seven is the larynx. Eight is the vocal cords and nine is the glottis, which is the opening in the vocal cords. This diagram shows us the oral tract and the nasal tract. And separating the oral tract from the nasal tract is the palate. 
one here is the nasal cavity two larynx three vocal cords four pharynx five tongue now the palate separating the oral and nasal cavity is divided into alveolar ridge hard palate soft palate or velum and the dangling part the hanging part is the uvula here is the division of the palate into three parts remember what they are alveolar ridge hard palate soft palate the tongue is as important as the palate for the production of speech sounds it's the most important organ of speech or articulator. It has the greatest variety of movements. Now the palate has a hard part and a soft part, so we can divide it quite easily into three sections. But the tongue has no natural division. To help us describe English speech sounds, we still have to divide the tongue into four parts this time. There's the tip, and then the blade, which both lie under the alveolar ridge. Then there's the tongue front, which lies under the hard palate, and the tongue back, which lies under the soft palate. And of course, there are the lips, which are very important in the production of speech sounds because they can make different shapes. They are very important in the description of some consonant sounds, and they are really important in the production of all vowel sounds. But in English, English speakers of RP make very little lip movement when they are speaking. Now, do you remember the organs of speech now? One is the nasal cavity, two, larynx, three, vocal cords, and the opening between the vocal cords is called the glottis. Four is the pharynx, not important for the production of English speech sounds. Five is the tongue. Six is part of the divided palate, which includes the alveolar ridge is number six. Seven is the hard palate. Eight is the soft palate or the velum. And the part right at the end of the palate the dangling part is called uvula. Once again, what are the organs of speech? Now, on the diagrams, you'll find some of the terms in red. The terms in red are for people who went to the science uh, section at high school and want to know how this relates to the biology that they learned at school. For everyone else, we're not really interested in the parts in red. They're not important for us. They're not relevant to speech and speaking. Now, pause the video, write the slide number, and write the numbers 1 to 18. What are the organs of speech? Again, do the same thing for this slide. Write the numbers and write the organs of speech after you pause the video. Here are the organs of speech in color. The palate separates the oral cavity from the nasal cavity. We have lips and the teeth. The tongue is divided into a tip, blade, front and back and the palate is divided into the alveolar ridge, hard palate, and soft palate or velum. This is another exercise for you to do. Pause the video and write the organs of speech. And one last time, pause the video, write the organs of speech. Here's a question for you. 
give three names that have been used for the accent usually used for teaching the pronunciation of British English. What's the difference between accent and dialect? Write your answers and take them with you to class. Second Year Phonetics is a basic course in English phonetics. This week we learn about the articulators and then as the weeks progress we learn about the production of vowel sounds in English, we have front vowels, back vowels, and central vowels. We also discuss the production of consonants, fricatives, plosives, affricates, nasals, and other consonants. Then we go back to another type of vowel called diphthong. We also learn about syllables, strong and weak, and we learn about word stress of simple words and other words. Is there a difference in the pronunciation of this word and that word? They signed a contract, but it started to contract. We also learn about weak forms and finally some aspects of connected speech. Our course has 75 marks on the final and we have 25% towards coursework. Coursework includes 5 points for attendance and participation and then 20 marks over quizzes, the midterm and the mock. Once again we have a course book and we have a recorded video presentation weekly. Please watch it before you go to class. Take notes, do the exercises and take those with you to class. There are supplementary materials and exercises. Take notes in class. After class you will receive on the Facebook page a PDF file with embedded audio tracks. Make sure that you attend all your classes, stick to your section, watch the assigned video at least once before you come to class. Make sure that you take notes and that you do the exercises. Take your notes and the exercises with you to class. You'll find out the marks that you made, that you earned, before the end of term. Now here are the promised apps and websites to help you with your learning. This is the British Council Sounds Right app which you can download at the uh, Google Play or app stores. This is an interactive phonemic chart to help you with your studies. The English Club have another interactive phonemic chart which you can use. And this website called phonemicchart.com has a keyboard of the phonemes that we learn. You can transcribe words to and from phonetics in this box and test yourself. These are the websites. Why is this course very important? Well, because English is difficult to pronounce. Let's read this poem together. Dearest creature in creation, study English pronunciation. I will teach you in my verse. Sounds like corpse, core, horse and worse. I will keep you Susie busy. Make your head with heat grow dizzy. Tear an eye, your dress you'll tear. Queer, fair seer, hear my prayer. Pray console your loving poet. Make my coat look new, dear, sew it. Just compare heart, hear and heard. Dies and diet, lord and word.
Dearest creature in creation, study English pronunciation. I will teach you in my verse, sounds like corpse, core, horse and worse. I will keep you Susy busy, make your head with heat grow dizzy. Tear in eye your dress will tear, so shall I, oh hear my prayer. Pray console your loving poet, make my coat look new, dear sew it. Just compare heart, beard and herd, dies and diet, lord and word. Sword and sword, retain and Britain, mind the latter how it's written. Now I surely will not plague you with such words as plaque and ague, but be careful how you speak, say break and stake, but bleak and streak. Cloven oven, how and low, script, receipt, show poem and toe. Hear me say, devoid of trickery, daughter, laughter and terpsichore, typhoid, measles, topsails, isles, exile, similes and reviles, scholar, vicar and cigar, solar, mica, war and far, one anemone, bowel, moral, kitchen, lichen, laundry, laurel, Gertrude, German, wind and mind, scene, malpemony, mankind. Billet does not rhyme with ballet, bouquet, wallet, mallet, chalet. Blood and flood are not like food, nor is mould like should and would. Viscous viscount, load and broad, toward, to forward, to reward. And your pronunciation's okay when you correctly say croquet, rounded, wounded, grieve and sieve, friend and fiend, alive and live. Ivy, privy, famous, clamour, and enamour rhyme with hammer, river, rival, tomb, bomb, comb, doll and roll, and sum and home. Stranger does not rhyme with anger, nor does devour with clangour. Souls but foul, haunt but aunt, font, front, want, want, grant and grant. Shoes goes does. Now first say finger, and then singer, ginger, linger. Real zeal, mauve, gauze, gouge and gauge. Marriage, foliage, mirage and age. Query does not rhyme with very, nor does fury sound like berry. Dost, lost, post and doth, cloth, loath. Job, nor bosom, transom, oath. Though the differences seem little, we say actual, but vissel. Refer does not rhyme with deffer, pfeffer does, and zephyr, heifer. Mint, pint, senate, and sedate, dull, bull, and George at late. Scenic, Arabic, Pacific, science, conscience, scientific. Liberty, library, heave, and heaven, Rachel, ache, moustache, eleven. We say hallowed, but aloud. People, leopard, toad, but vowed. Mark the differences, moreover, between mover, cover, clover. Leeches, breeches, wise, precise, chalice, but police, and lice. Camel, constable, unstable, principal, disciple, label. Petal, panel, and canal, wait, surprise, plat, promise, pal. Worm and storm, shares, chaos, chair. Senator, spectator, mayor. Tour but hour and succour for gas alas and Arkansas. Sea idea career area Tsar Maria but malaria. Youth south southern cleanse and clean doctrine turpentine marine. Compare alien with Italian dandelion and battalion. Sally with ally yay ye i i a i way and key. Say a verb but ever fever neither leisure skein deceiver heron granary canary. Crevice and device and eerie. Face but preface, not a face. Phlegm, phlegmatic, ass, glass, base. Large but targets, gin, give, verging. Ought, out, joust and scour, scourging. Ear but earn and wear and tear. Do not rhyme with here but air. Seven is right but so is even. Hyphen, rough and nephew, Stephen. Monkey, donkey, turk, a jerk. Ass, grasp, wasp and cork and work. Pronunciation, think of psyche, is a paling, stout and spiky. Won't it make you lose your wits? Writing groats and saying grits. It's a dark abyss or tunnel, strewn with stones, stowed solace, gunnel. Islington and Isle of Wight, housewife, verdict and indict. Finally, which rhymes with enough, though, through, plough, or dough, or cough. Hiccup has the sound of cup, my advice is to give up. My advice is certainly not to give up. This week, we learned the terms phonetics, Articulatory phonetics, auditory phonetics, and acoustic phonetics, phonology, phoneme, symbol, and transcription, and the slashes for phonemes, IPA, which stands for the International Phonetic Association, and also for the International Phonetic Alphabet, accent and dialect. Received pronunciation, modern received pronunciation, standard southern British English, general British, and the organs of speech or the articulators. Please read chapter 1 starting phonetics and take your notes from this video and the exercises to class on Monday.
You might want to watch the video Receive Pronunciation. This is an optional activity. Next week, we learn what we mean by cardinal vowels and we focus on English front vowels and English back vowels. The English front vowels are E, I, E, A. The back vowels are A, O, O, U, U. We learn all about that next week, inshallah. Good luck, everyone. Bye-bye.